Yes. Thank you. I'll try to share my uh, PowerPoint presentation. Mm. Okay. Can you see? Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. We can, can see. Can you see it in the presentation mode or in the normal no, uh... presentation mode? Perfect. So, uh, well, in this uh, intervention, I'll try to uh, introduce uh, a specific attention for uh, the study of images uh, within the, the present situation, a situation characterized by uh, what is, has been called uh, platmo, platform society, uh, for instance, uh, by Jose Van Dijk, or uh, digital capitalism. So, um, my speech uh, moves between media studies and uh, visual studies, visual culture studies. Uh, to conduct this reflection, I will use an example that seems to me very apt to um, introduce my arguments. And uh, this is the example of the effects of face distortion, face manipulation, effects uh, uh, that are spreading uh, with impressive speed on uh, different social platforms and especially on, on Instagram. So uh, I'll call it uh, also in order to discuss, to critically discuss other definition, uh, exa an example of this guy's reality. So uh, let me introduce this uh, particular topic in August, uh, 2019, an update to Instagram let users submit uh, they or, uh, they uh, own filters uh, to the apps FX gallery. Some of these filters, such as the trendy one uh, Fix Me, when applied to photos would mimic the effects of uh, facelifts, Botox injections, and other surgeries, face surgeries. In October 2019, Instagram decided to ban the publication of uh, uh, photographs and selfies that contained the distortion effects, but uh, well, of course, the decision was suggested by the concern that they could contribute to unrealistic beauty standards linked to the negative body image among users. But uh, soon, uh, and exactly on uh, August, uh, August 6, uh, uh, 2020, the platform decided to reintroduce phase distortion effects. Um, and the phase and the different phase altering effects. Uh, well, the, the business of phase manipulation effects uh, uh, actually is in full growth. They are used by more than uh, 600 million people a month on Instagram alone. And uh, the uh, Spark AR Creators community counts today more than 400,000 members for a total of 1.2 million effects available for users. Uh, moreover, it moves a considerable flow of money. Uh, AR filters are partly free, partly for sale and partly provided in forms of branded content by cosmetic and plastic surgery companies and by other kinds of companies. Uh, well, we I have to admit that part of them are just for uh, funny and amusing uses, but uh, we have to uh, recognize that many others and uh, most of them aim to beautify, this is the technical terms, to beautify the body and especially the faces of the portrayed uh, subjects. So uh, the phenomenon is a massive uh, one uh, with consequences that are not yet uh, well understood and nonetheless various, various observers 
have expressed some concerns uh, regarding this uh, particular uh, phenomenon. For instance, uh, uh, Tate Ryan Mosley on uh, MIT Technology, Technology uh, Review outlined that youngers are subject in an uh, experiment that will show how the technology changes the way we form our identities, represent ourselves, and relate to others. So the problem is uh, how to define this kind of images. So the effect creators speak of a redefined, or um, as I said, an augmented reality. Uh, from a technical point of view, I think it is more correct to speak of a mixed reality, but I propose to introduce the term of disguised reality in order to outline how the, uh, the actual reality is, uh, uh, so to say, rigged by, rigged by this kind of, uh, of images. Um, as I said, I intend to use the example of disguised reality in order to introduce a reflection of the status of uh, images in the, uh, in the contemporary context. And uh, um, I, um, I want to outline three figures of, uh, 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 of present images. I intend to define images as uh, technological objects, as practical objects, and finally as uh, political economic objects. So let me start from images as uh, technological objects. Uh, already in the 80s, William uh, Flusser um, defined the contem contemporary photographic, cinematographic, and televisual images as uh, uh, technical images. And uh, he um, heralded a, a new transformation of uh, um, images uh, as uh, more directly linked to the management of information. But we have to say that uh, what happened and what is happening exceeded the Flusser's uh, prediction. Indeed, today we should think images as a part or as a final um, output of a complex data flow uh, management. Um, in uh, particular, we can uh, uh, distinguish three main uh, steps of this management. The first step is the acquisition, capture, ingestion of data. Then there is a second step consisting in uh, uh, their cleaning, uh, uh, sorting, and uh, uh, then uh, the process, the introduction of processes of manipulation, of combination, uh, mixing, blending, and finally of extraction of uh, data and uh, of data uh, of data pattern, and finally the third step is a step of uh, uh, actualization of data in the um, twofold possible form of uh, pragmatic, of use of pragmatic actuators or effectors, or uh, sensorial actuators uh, such as a screen. Well, it is this final phase, this final output of uh, data flow management that give a, a bird that gives bird to um, uh, to images, or what is a today uh, a kind of images. So, well, of course, we can find here the, the kind of colonization that data colonialism cited yesterday by Nick Coldry, and also we can find here the logic of interaction between people and smart objects uh, uh, outlined by Graham Makel um, yesterday. Um, well, uh, disguised reality effects uh, are a perfect example of the production of this kind of, uh, of image as a part of data flow uh, management. Um, we must be careful not to confuse uh, 
them, this kind of effect with the, the filters, with the old Photoshop filters, because this new generation of effects uses sophisticated biometric phase recognition algorithms uh, to apply the effects to phase in motion in uh, completely realistic videos that show the disguised subject talking, moving, and assuming a, a different kind of uh, emotional expression. So to do so, they apply very sophisticated technologies from uh, artificial intelligence, computer vision, augmented reality, and uh, phase recognition. So, <clears throat> sorry. So uh, we can say that uh, uh, contemporary, this kind of images um, is very close to what is called the, uh, the deep fakes. And uh, well, actually they use the same kind of algorithms. So the disguised the reality effects uh, can be defined as uh, technological, not technical, but technological and algorithmic images. And uh, I prefer to speak of uh, visual algorithms uh, in order to uh, outline how computational processes are important uh, in order of uh, constitute of uh, uh, to, to, to constitute this kind of images. So my second point, uh, my second definition is images as practical objects. Uh, well, uh, well, as you perhaps know, the, the web is full of uh, facial, facial analysis services. For example, the Coves Studio platform, which is based in Australia, provides a free facial aesthetic consultancy service. Uh, in this case, an AI analyzes your face uh, and predicts its aesthetical flows and their probability of manifestation. And of course, uh, the platform form suggests automatically appropriate cosmetic surgery and uh, uh, products you can buy to prevent uh, uh, these failures or to fix it. Uh, similarly, the Face++ Plus Plus platform offers a series of free services, in particular the beauty scoring system, uh, which uh, um, shows two results. One score uh, predicts how men, how men might respond to a picture, and the other uh, represents a female perspective. It is very useful for uh, for uh, building a, a, an image for platform of uh, sentimental of sexual uh, encounters for sexual meetings. Uh, well, oh, these practices can be considered frivolous. Mm. However, they are based, as I said, on very complex and uh, advanced technologies um, that sometimes de derive from less innocent uses. For example, uh, professional moderators of uh, social platforms such as TikTok uh, begin, are beginning to apply beauty scoring algorithms to ban some faces, some photos marked as uh, uh, ugly and unpleasant, ugly facial looks, uh, um, disformatted face, uh, lack of front teeth, senior people, uh, well, it touched me personally, so uh, I'm a bit involved with too many wrinkles and uh, facial deformities, as well as other kind of, uh, of uh, uh, not perfect or unpleasant um, uh, kind of uh, uh, phases of body or bodies. Uh, A uh, face++ plus plus algorithmic engine, moreover, is implemented by one of the giants of the biometric recognition sector, the Chinese company MegV, 
And in May uh, 2019, the NGO organization Human Rights Watch reported that phase plus plus code would be used by the Chinese government to collect data on and then track the Uyghur uh, community in Xinjiang. Even though the involvement of, of MEGV in the Uyghur case is still controversial, Nonetheless, the involvement of the company in Chinese government's surveillance network is a matter of fact. So that to sum up this point, um, so we can notice that first uh, blurring, we have a, a more and more blurring boundaries between uh, uh, medial, artistical, medial um, and so on and practical uses of uh, images. Um, we can speak, I, I, I spoke uh, in this case of a post-media condition. And uh, what I want to outline here is that visual algorithms uh, are today uh, practical operational tools, uh, useless, useless to say, I perfectly join the anti-representation, anti-representational stance uh, of Professor Grusin. Finally, we can consider images as a political economic object, not just uh, in the more immediate, uh, immediate uh, meaning outlined yesterday by Joseph Stiglitz and by Nick Koldry, but in a more a general and uh, wider uh, general way uh, in which uh, political economy um, is uh, intended uh, as uh, any regulated management of extraction, production, circulation, exchange, accumulation, deprivation, disposal of resources. Uh, since these resources are continually shared or shareable and since they are managed within a common space. Economics is always a political economy, of course. So we can consider from this point of view, visual algorithms as a, uh, the, the, uh, as a pivot for exchanging the different kinds of resources. Pictures, light, and data are transformed in uh, different immaterial resources, for instance, the reputational or the attentional ones, the agentive resources, uh, possibly put the possibility of action and their possible foreclosure, and uh, finally to material resources, of course. In conclusion, my arguments are the following. First, images are no longer just pictures, that is, are no longer uh, objects to be observed or contemplated for an instance. They are today, as visual algorithms, practical dispositives capable of acting in and on the world, regulating the flows of and exchanges between different and multiple kinds of resources. Therefore, images are tools of power that play a fundamental role in a distributing, distribution, redistribution, and also in accumulation of common resources. From this point of view, I think that a dialogue between a, a semiotic, a visual, and cultural studies on the one hand and political economic approaches on the other one should no longer be postponed. So I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor.